This is seven pounds of some of the world's most expensive beef and I'm going to ruin it because of Food Wars. In Yukumi's battle against Yukihita, she throws down A5 Wagyu beef. At $110 a pound, you don't really want to mess with this too much. I also invited a group of friends over to give this a taste and see whether or not it stacks up to Yukihita because yes, we're going to be making both dishes today because I know you guys are going to be crap if I didn't. Smash like because it's coming up on my birthday and to share this video because I this is my month's budget. Now we're actually going to be starting backwards. In this case, we're going to be prepping Yukihita's dish first. The reason for that is because I don't want a five beef to be sitting around. And lo and behold, I already have the steaks marinating in onions. For Yukihita's dish, all you really need to do is to take your couple of steaks, take a ton of minced onions, and make sure the steaks are fully covered in the onions. These have been marinating for about three to four hours, so that way they're super tender. I also did hit them with the crisscross cut, essentially making sure that a lot of those enzymes hit the inside of the steak. This is going to make the steak super tender. And this was Yukihita's secret weapon against Nikumi's A5. I'm only going to hit this with just a splash of oil because we also have to use butter for Yukihita's dish and for Nikumi's. There's a lot of butter and a lot of fat in this food. In anticipation of all the fat you're about to eat, do your tong dance because that's super effective. I only have two hours before people arrive. It is currently 3 p.m. I told them dinner's at 5, so I got to get all of this done before they get here. Don't believe in you. Believe in me who believes in you. And also, we're making two dishes at the same time versus one in the same two hour window, but we can get this done. To expedite the process, I'm going to be searing off both of these steaks ahead of time and then baking them off later right before we need to plate up. This is kind of like banquet style, so we can do it this way. Oh, remember I mentioned butter? Yeah, hit this with a large dab of butter right into your pan after searing those steaks. Grab your onions and run around the kitchen looking for a utensil because you forgot to grab all of your mise en place you needed and then take those onions and place them right into that pan with that butter. We're going to cook up and soften these onions with the butter. If you can't get all the onions in there, don't worry about it. Remember to season this with black pepper and some salt. Give your onions a toss, making sure that all the fat from the pan is being soaked up by those onions. This is what your onions start to look like. So there's actually no vent above me and uh, the fire alarm did decide to go off, but that was a fun run around. Now continue cooking your onions until they start to slightly caramelize. Remember, we don't want to cook these all the way through. We want them slightly al dente or to where they're just slightly underdone. Once those onions are done being caramelized, place these into whatever heat proof container you have and set them to the side to cool down so we can use them for later. And now for the sauce. Is this bad for carbon steel? I don't know, I do it all the time. Sorry, not sorry. I am going to apologize for this, but I am going to also deglaze my carbon seal pan with some red wine and hit this with some soy sauce to create our sauce for our steak later. This is essentially a burr rouge, so we are going to mount this with cold butter after turning off the heat on our sauce. Make sure you mix this butter completely with that hot liquid to finally make our nice, thick, delicious sauce. I always like to taste this. Make sure it has enough salt. Probably does because of the soy sauce. Oh, that's good. That'll go good with the onions. After destroying whatever was in the sink, place all of your sauce into a heat proof container and set it to the side to cool down after get it into the frame, at least please. Here's the thing with Nikumi and cooking her A5. I honestly think they didn't check their facts. And there are two points which are which are very polarizing in this episode. At one point, she sticks the needle into the meat, places it to her lips, which is very, very suggestive. And she says, this is a perfect 64 degrees. And I'm assuming Celsius because they are in Japan. 64 degrees Celsius is about 150 degrees Fahrenheit. 150 degrees Fahrenheit is about a medium well steak. But then when she served it to the judges, that's not well done steak. There's a lot of red there. So I'm gonna go with option number two of following what the plate up looked like. So at least I have it out. We're going with version number two, the plate up. Not her, not this one. Not this, uh, uh not that one. Listen, I had to really put this into context to tell you guys that I really wasn't comfortable throwing all of this meat into the oven like this. But since we're going for it, make sure you do salt this all the way around with just some sea salt. We're not putting anything else on it, just making sure it's nicely salted before we get this ready to throw into the oven. This is $700 worth of beef. This is ridiculous. I am sorry for anyone that I'm about to offend. Just listen to it sing. This is like the 12 nights of Christmas, 10, 25 nights, how many ever nights of Christmas? That's what this is. Here's another point of contention. She butter bastes fattiest meat on the planet. Slap that fat slab of butter right onto your steak and then start butter basting the top of this. Make sure that that pan isn't ripping hot because you don't want to overcook this or burn that butter. It's really, really difficult to hold up six and a half or seven pounds of meat to butter base. Isn't that what all that working out is for? Whatever, dude. Just make sure that you flip the meat onto each side to continue butter basting. This is a disaster, guys. This is a disaster. I don't need complaining. I need results. I'm just trying to get a nice even crust as well as I can all over this ribeye. Otherwise, it'll cook unevenly later. We're only going to be doing this for about two to three minutes on each side. Oh god, my towel's on fire. <laughs> no, 
Don't smoke out the house again. <laughs> no. Who entrusted this man with $700 worth of meat? I, I don't know. It wasn't me, okay? Just whenever you get it done butter basting, remove it from the heat. This, I hope, is our savior in all of this, this thermometer. Ever so gently insert that thermometer in the most etchy way possible, and then remove that hunk of meat from the pan and place it onto a sheet tray with a wire rack. Now, it gets to go in the oven until it reaches an internal temperature of 115 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about a medium rare. Say levy. It really does pain me. While the meat's doing its thing in the oven, we are going to make that garlic butter peel off. And for this, we are going to need both butter and beef fat. We're gonna need both of these to make this garlic butter peel off. And then add a quarter of an onion diced. Luckily, I had all those onions from Yukihita's side. So thank you, Yukihita. I'm also adding in around 10 cloves worth of garlic that I sliced nice and thin on a mandolin just to get these nice and tender. Now you obviously need something to stir this with. So please go find yourself a wooden spoon and give this a nice mix, making sure that all that butter and all that beef fat has fully been tossed with all of your garlic and your onions, making sure that none of that precious garlic escapes. Continue cooking this until everything is nice and tender. This also smells incredible. There's nothing wrong with this. There is absolutely nothing wrong with making peel off this way. And once that garlic is nice and tender, this is when we're actually going to add in two cups worth of jasmine rice. Make sure you fully toss in the jasmine rice with your onions and your garlic and all of your fats, making sure that there's no fat at the bottom. Season it with a bit of salt. And once it is nice and incorporated, this is when we add in four cups worth of water. This rice is how my mom always made rice she makes some of the best rice on the planet, and I will stand by that. Except she never used butter or beef fat, but just the, the peel off method. Once that water starts coming up to a boil, we are going to throw a lid on this and cook this for about 10 to 15 minutes over a medium heat. Walk away, leave it alone. After those 10 to 15 minutes, your rice should be done. And what you're looking for is to make sure that there is no liquid at the bottom of your pot and that the rice is nice and tender. Uh, Nikumi also mentioned that there's quite a bit of butter in this, so we're gonna finish this with butter and some salt. Why do you do this so forcefully? Sweating and smelling like popcorn. Popcorn tonight. I can confirm, we smelled like both beef fat and popcorn. Make sure all of that butter is nicely melted with all of your rice. Give this a taste to make sure it is fully seasoned. This is the second best time to season this. That's delicious. Now throw a lid on it and keep it warm on the stove. Right, we're gonna put this back on the stove and just turn it off. Leave it, it's, it's fine. Now, since I am throwing somewhat of a dinner party for my guests, I wanted to make sure that they had something else on the table other than rice and meat all night. I picked up a bunch of pickled vegetables from Awajamaya, from daikon to shredded daikon to whatever that is, to some seaweed, to whatever that is to some pickled cucumber, to some more pickled cucumber, and place it on this really nice tray. My sous chef wife was nice enough to pour me a Japanese lager. I did a little dance and we are ready to pull this A5 out of the oven. Witness all of its glory. Would anyone like some beef fat to take home? That Wagyu beef fat would be amazing on french fries. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big hunk of meat. It may be a big hunk of meat, but it still needs to rest before we cut into it. So remove the thermometer and place this behind you so this way we can let it rest for about 10 to 15 minutes. And while it was resting, I decided to explain food wars to my friends. The clothing explosion is what's happening in their mind. And their meat juices are flying everywhere. It's crazy. <laughs> it's probably what's going to be happening tonight after all this meat. I mean, I just... How would you guys describe food wars? Let me know in the comments down below. For this, I did pick up some brand new bowls so this way we could have something nice to plate up with. Plated up my garlic peel off first, then grabbed our hunk of A5. This thing looks almost deep fried and almost too beautiful to cut. Almost. I don't know how to cut this because in the show, it's like shaped like a rose. Now I just want you to listen to this. Oh, oh. Oh! Everyone is super excited to see the inside of this, especially after that crackling. And of course, I did cut off a small chunk, gave it to one of my good friends, and look at his face after eating it. That is the face of someone who has just experienced food wars in real life. I ended up slicing just a few chunks of the A5, placing it right on top of each bowl of rice. The A5 is actually super rich, so you don't want to give anyone too much of it. The center of the roast is more rare than the ends, and that was really nice to see because I was worried that I had overcooked it, even though I only cooked it to 95 degrees. Fahrenheit, but just look at how gorgeous this bowl of food is. Make sure you take a picture for the gram so we can post it later. And after serving my friends, I wanted to see what their reaction would be after digging into this. Hey, hold up, we gotta pay for this somehow. You guys asked for it, so here it is. My limited edition Umai t-shirt. These are only going to be available for the next seven days, so make sure you click the link down below, pick up a t-shirt, support the channel directly so we can continue to do these ridiculous videos. So after this taste test, check out the link down below where you can pick up your very own limited edition Umai t-shirt. And it is my birthday today, so that that would be really cool if you guys bought a bunch of them and tagged me on Instagram. You can enjoy your meat now. His clothes are popping off already. <laughs> I know, it's just that we were like, oh. Ooh. Ugh. That's insane. It's so rich. I'm never gonna eat a steak again. Does it feel like overly rich? I don't I don't think, think so. so. Mm -mm. No, no. I wouldn't say overly. Yeah, I mean, I give me a couple more bites. I don't know that term. Like it's a little bit almost too much. 
I'll take yours. Yeah. Don't worry, there wasn't any fighting for any bowls of food, and I wanted to give you my take on this. It's almost just like eating butter. Yeah, this is really good. Even though it's really rich, I don't feel like it's overdoing it. If you looked up decimate, it would be me eating that bowl of food earlier. Now take your plum paste and a bunch of steamed white rice, mix it together thoroughly, and then place some of that rice into your bowls of choice. I actually ran out of the other bowls, so I'm using these. And I am slicing this nice and thin because I wasn't able to give a whole steak to everyone. This actually puts it at an advantage, so this way they don't have to fight it. Top this with a ton of your onions, followed by all of your sauce, and Yukihira's chali bean steak is ready to test. I wanted to make sure they got this second, just like they did in Food Wars. So we went from $110 a pound from the A5 to $4 a pound. In the show, they had the expensive one first. So give this one a shot. What is the orange stuff in here? Uh, there, that's, that's, a, that's a salty surprise. <laughs> what did you do to it? This is where the <laughs> I shouldn't have had the other one first. Yeah. This is very good, but it's good flavor, mm -hmm. but it's definitely tougher. Okay, so after trying both, uh, raise your hand for the second dish. <laughs> yeah. Okay, raise your hand for the first dish. Make sure you get subscribed, share this video because it costs me a lot of money. My name is Chef PK, keep playing with your food.